Hello everyone. I'm really thankful for, for this time that God has given unto us. And also I'm really thankful because God continually is guiding us so that we will have this gospel lecture. I believe that as you are attending this gospel lecture, God is going to grace you and also you are going to realize the heart of God continually. So today also I'd like to share with you about the law and the purpose of God giving us the law and also the requirement of the law. So let's read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 2 starting from verses 36. 1 Kings chapter 2 starting from verses 36. The Bible says, And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build thee an house in Jerusalem, and dwell there, and go not forth thence any whither. For it shall be that on the day thou goest out and passest over the brook Kidron, thou shalt know for, for certain that thou shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon thy own head. And she may say unto the king, The saying is good, as my lord the king hath said, So will thy servant do, and she may dwell in Jerusalem many days. And it came to pass at the end of three years that two of the servants of Shimei ran away unto Akish son of Makkah, king of Gath, and they told Shimei, saying, Behold, thy servants be in Gath. And Shimei arose and saddled his ass and went to Gath to Akish the seek, to seek his servants. And Shimei went and brought his servant from Gath. And it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and was come again. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Did I not make thee to swear by the Lord? And protest unto thee, saying, No, for a certain, on the day thou goest out and walkest abroad, any whither that thou shalt surely die. And thou sayest unto me, The word I have heard is good. Why then hast thou not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I have charged thee with? I've read up to verses 43. So, uh, as we were sharing yesterday, that is the word that we shared. We could see what Bible considers sin, and also we could see how sin came into this world and what is sin. And also we could talk about how can we come, how can we be free from this sin. Then we realize that, that for us to be free does not rely on our own ability. For us to be free does not depend with us. For us to be free, it does not rely on our good deeds or good things that we are doing. But it is to receive the goodness of Jesus Christ. Then who can receive the goodness of Jesus Christ? The one who has realized that he has failed, the one who has realized that he doesn't have anything good in him, that is the one who can receive the goodness of Jesus Christ. Then how can I reach this goodness of Jesus Christ once I could have in my life the true repentance? Because many people, they are living without having the true repentance. But what God wants from us so that we should have the true repentance? And at what time can I have the true repentance? The time that I've come to the realization of myself. So in repentance, the most important thing is to realize myself, to realize who I am before God. Because without the, that realization, then there's no way I can turn to God. There's no way I can come to God. But for me to come to God, then I need to come to the true repentance. And coming to that true repentance, I must realize myself. So through the word of Bible, we could realize that, ah, we were born with a sin. We are not sinners because we are committing sin. So that's why salvation also cannot come through our deeds. Salvation cannot come through our works. Salvation cannot come through the good things that we are doing. But salvation is coming at the time that we have surrendered. At the time that we have realized that there's nothing good that can come out of us. That is the time. That, we can, that is the time that we can accept the gospel and also gospel can free us from sin. So, uh, when we think about this part, in real, realizing ourselves, always we have got two standards. There is the standard of man and there is the standard of God. 
In the standard of man, what is there in the standard of man? In the standard of man is that if I do good, then I'm good. If I commit sin, then I'm a sinner. So always man is relying upon good and evil. Man is relying upon good and evil. But the standard of God is one. What is this? So when we think about this part, when we think about this part, we realize that ha, there are two standards. When we talk about standards, we have two standards. So we have man's, God's, and also we have man's. Man's standard. Then in God's standard is what? In God's standard we have Genesis. Genesis chapter 6 verses 5. And also we have Jeremiah. We have Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9. But according to the standard of man is always changing. According to the standard of man relies on what? Good and evil. So according to man is that when I do good, I'm good. When I do evil, then I'm evil. So always man is putting his standard according to his own deeds. Man is relying upon his own actions. Man is relying upon his own actions. Man is relying upon the deeds. He's relying upon the deeds. But when we think about God, God who looks upon the heart, the heart of man, what is dwelling in the heart. God does not look upon the deeds, but God is looking upon the heart of man. So when we think about God, according to God, the goodness of man is same as with the evilness of man. So the evilness of man and the goodness of man, all of them, they are good. They are evil. So all good things that man is doing and all the evil things that man is doing, all of them, they are evil in the eyes of, of God. So your actions, your deeds, all these things, God saying that they are evil. They are dirty and nothing good can come out of them. But no, man doesn't know this. Man thinks like this. Ah, there's something good that I can do. No. And this goodness of man is making man to reject the God standard. It's making man to reject the God standard. Yes, according to the God standard, according to what God says, what does God say? In the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 6, verses 5, the Bible says like this. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5. The Bible says that, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So in this part, the Bible says that God saw. So there is how God is seeing. There is the perspective of God. There is how God is looking. So according to the eyes of God, according to the perspective of God, according to the standard of God, God says that, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination or the thought of man is evil continually. Then according to the standard of God, God is saying that we are evil continually. Then now what is repentance? Repentance is the time that I've thrown away my own thought, the time that I've thrown away my own way, then I realize that my ways are evil, I realize that my thoughts are evil, and nothing good can come out of me, then I accept the standard of God. The time that I've accepted the standard of God, that I'm the one who is evil continually. I'm the one who does not have anything good in me. When I accepted that standard of God, according to that heart, that I'm evil continually, according to the word of God, by accepting it, it is a true repentance. Then uh, how can I accept this? I can only accept it once I've come to the true realization of me. The time that I've realized that I have failed in the spiritual life, the time that I've realized that everything that I'm doing, I've already failed. Then during that time, I will be surrendering by having the heart. I don't have anything good in me. I'm the one who is evil continually. Then in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 says this, The heart of man is deceitful above all things who know it. Yes, what nothing good can come out of my heart. 
Because the heart is deceitful above all things. Nothing good can come out of it. When you remember yesterday when we were sharing about sin, we read the book of Mark chapter 7, verses 21. That out of man proceed evil thoughts. So out of man, nothing good can proceed. Out of my heart, nothing good can come out. Inwardly, I'm evil. Outwardly, I'm evil. I'm the one who's dirty, 100%. I don't have anything good in me. So God wants us to accept this fact. And the people have surrendered to this fact, to the standard of God, that the people have come to the true repentance. But the problem is, when Adam left the word of God, when Adam departed from the word of God, when Adam departed from God, as you know that the nature of sin, it is departure from God. The eyes of Adam that were fixed on God now could not be fixed on God anymore. Now could be fixed on the flesh. Adam could live the standard of God as he used to live under the standard of God. And now what was not standard, the thing that was non-standard now became standard unto him. Now the things that were false became true to him. The things that were abnormal became normal to him because he had already left the standard of God. And now the eyes of Adam turned toward the flesh. And when he turned toward the flesh, he realized that he was naked. What made him now to see his nakedness? And when he saw his nakedness, we could see he's starting to work. Adam is starting to prepare the apron to cover his nakedness. Why Adam is covering his nakedness? So that he can appear good, he can appear clean, and not their own work. And this work of man that man is doing, we call it his own righteousness. He is called, we call it his own righteousness. But if he would have been in the standard of God, he would have realized that even the work that I'm going to do is evil. Nothing good can come out of me. Let me surrender before God. I'm the one who is evil continually. I'm the one who is deceitful above all things. There's nothing good in me. Satan has been deceiving me. Satan has put the distrust in my heart to go against God. He would have turned to God to seek the grace of God. But instead of turning to God, during that time, he only applied his own works. We could see man now is starting working. But when man started working, only the work of man could separate him from God. And the work of man could put him far from God. And the work of man continually was pushing man away from God. Because he left the standard of God. Because he came to be far from the standard of God. Then during that time when he came and he was far from the standard of God, he could have his own righteousness. He started having his own righteousness. He started thinking that if I do something good, then this good thing that I'm doing can bring and can make, can make me to have relationship, relationship between me and God again. Everyone, this is how Satan is deceiving us. This is how Satan is making us to stop looking upon God. Then Satan is making us to focus and to fix our eyes on the flesh. And the time that we have fixed our eyes on our flesh, we always see the good that we have done and the evil that we have done. So when we do good, then we are happy. When we do good, then we, are fe then we feel somehow fully spirited. But when we do evil during that time, what is happening to us? During that time, we are downhearted. During that time, we feel bad and condemnation is there to condemn us then we are trying to do go something good again. All the good things, all the evil things that you have, nothing good can come out of you. There's nothing good that can come out of you. Although, yes, we are trying to live good life, you are trying to do something good, but God is telling you today, accept the standard of God. Come to the standard of God. Realize the book of Genesis chapter 6, verses 5, that nothing good can come out of you. Realize the book of Isaiah, where we read last time, Yesterday we shared about that, Isaiah 55, verses 7 and 8, that your thoughts are evil, your ways are evil, nothing good can come out of you. So that you surrender fully before God, so that God can start working upon your life. He came to the people who have already failed. He came to the people who cannot do. He came to the people who, that, who have realized that nothing good can come out of them. 
Moon cannot produce the light by itself. Moon needs the sun for it to produce the light. Even we also, for us, the good that can come out of us, it is only the goodness of Jesus Christ. Then who can see that goodness of Jesus Christ? The one who have realized that he doesn't have any good. And nothing good is dwelling in him. So the time that you have realized that I don't have anything good, you should surrender. And that surrendering, it is what we call repentance. That surrendering, it is what we call giving up, having the art I cannot do. I don't have anything good in me, and nothing good can come in, out of me. Then when we read also in the book of Isaiah 59, verse 6, Isaiah 59, verse 6. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are the works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. So in this book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 6, it says, Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they, they cover themselves with their works. Their works are the work of iniquity. So in this part, God is rejecting the work of man. You know, when Adam departed from God, when Adam disobeyed the voice of God, what did Adam do? Adam took the fig leaves to prepare the apron to cover his nakedness. In the Bible, what is nakedness? Nakedness is sin. So when he was covering his nakedness, when he was covering his sin, he could cover his sin always. Maybe he prepared the apron in the morning. When it comes to 1 p.m., that apron is dry. His nakedness is being seen. He has to prepare another apron. When it comes to evening, the, the apron is dry. He has to prepare another apron. So this apron that they were making, this apron that always they were working on could not cover their nakedness perfectly. Always their nakedness could be seen before God. Always their nakedness could appear, could be revealed before God because it was through the work of man. Although they could always do this, it could not save them. It could not remove their nakedness. Their nakedness could be seen continually. Likewise also, many people, they are always crying for their sin. Many people, they are always repenting their sin. Many people, they are always asking for forgiveness of sin. But although they are asking for forgiveness of sin, although, yes, they are crying because of their sin, their sin is always appearing before God. Their sin could always be seen before God. Their sin is always being revealed. Why? Because they are trying to solve their sin by their own ability. They are trying to solve their sin with their own power. With their own power, when they are trying to solve their sin, nobody has ever succeeded. Most of the time, they could fail. Most of the time, they could be defeated because none has ever succeeded. But once they can give up, once they can realize that, ah, there's nothing good in me. My works are the works of iniquity. My works cannot cover me. My works cannot cover my sin. Then the time that they can give up, then during that time, God can save them. God can give them the grace. Everyone, for how long will you be trying? For how long will we be trying? You need to give up. You need to surrender. You need to come to the realization that you don't have anything good in you. Although continually you are surrender, you are trying. But the more you are trying to solve your sin, the more you commit sin. You are trying and the more you are committing sin. Why? Because the works of men, they are filthy in the eyes of God. Isaiah says like this. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 64. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. We are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquity like the wind have taken us away. So in this part, the Bible says, we are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. So when we stood before God with our works, when we stood before God with our own righteousness, the Bible says, all our righteousness they are like free, filthy rocks. All your works, those good works that you have done, they are filthy rocks before God. They are dirty. They are filthy. Nothing good can come out of them. The only thing that you need to do 
it is to surrender. What did Paul say? Paul said that, let not be found in me my own righteousness, which according to the law. But let be found in me the righteousness of God, which is of faith. So which means that we have got two kinds of righteousness. There is the righteousness of faith, which comes from God. And we have the righteousness of man, which is of the works of the law. But the righteousness of man is dirty. The righteousness of man is filthy. The righteousness of man cannot make him holy, cannot make him righteous. Why many people, whenever we say that we are righteous, many people are saying that, ah, how can you say that we are righteous? Because they rely upon the righteousness which is of the works, which always break. Whenever you are trying, it break. Whenever you are trying, it fail. It has never succeeded. But the time that you can surrender, and also you can realize that I cannot do it, nothing good can come out of me, then you can surrender to the goodness of Jesus Christ. And in this goodness of Jesus Christ can make you holy and righteous and also can make you perfect. We should come out of our own righteousness. That own righteousness. Where people think that they can live according to the law. Where people think that they can live according to the word. That righteousness is filthy. That righteousness is dirty. You should come to the righteousness of God. You should come to the righteousness which is by faith. Today we read this book of 1 Kings chapter 2. We read the book of 1 Kings chapter 2. Let us share it. In the book of 2 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 2, books of 1 Kings chapter 2, the Bible is talking about Shimei. And also the Bible is talking about Solomon and David. So when King David was old, and when David was about to die, during that time, there is the son of David who was going to sit on the throne. And now when David was about to die, David could remember two kinds of people. David remembered his enemies. At the same time, also David could remember his friends. But among the enemy, there was one man that David could not forget about. Who was this one man? Among the enemy that David could not forget about, it was Shimei. What did Shimei do to David that made David not forget about him? In the book of 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 8, the Bible is telling us what Shimei did to David. The Bible says that, 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 8, And behold thou as with thee, Shimei the son of Gera, a Benjamite of Bahurim, which cast me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. Now therefore hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man, and knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him. But his all head bring thou down to the grave with blood. Then after David has said this thing to Solomon, David slept. David passed on. So when we think about this part, the time that Absalom went against David, when David was running away to go to exile in Mahanaim, during that time, she may came, she may cast him with a grievous curse. Yes, David was a man of war. David was having soldiers. But during that time, David could not kill Shimei. But although he could not kill Shimei, Shimei remained in the heart of David. Now, after that, he said this to, to, to Solomon. After Solomon had sat on the throne. Now, when Solomon was already set, one day, Solomon called Shimei. And Solomon said to Shimei like this. He said to him, build your house in Jerusalem. That he should build his house in Jerusalem. So, let's say like this. Let's say that uh, this is the Jerusalem. This is the Jerusalem. And in front of Jerusalem, we have the river, which is called Kidron. And he said to him, build your house in Jerusalem. And don't go out of Jerusalem. Because the day that will come out of Jerusalem, and will pass this river Kidron, for sure, to die, you shall die. Then when we think about this part, when we think about this part, why did Solomon 
gave this condition to Shimei. Was it that Solomon wanted Shimei to live or he wanted to kill Shimei? Yes, when we, say, when we look at it lightly, we can say like this, no, he wanted to forgive him, he wanted him to live. But in the reality, he has given him the condition. He has said to Shimei, build your house in Jerusalem and don't come out of Jerusalem. The day that will come out of Jerusalem, the day that will pass river, river Kidron, for sure, die, you shall die. But now, when he said this to Solomon, how did Solomon answer? When we check in verses 37, 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 37 says, For it shall be that on the, on the day thou goest out and passest over the brook Kidron, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon thy own head. And she may say unto the king, The thing is good, as my lord the king hath said, so will thy servant do. And she may dwell in Jerusalem many days. So when we check verses 38, we could see the heart of Shimei. After Solomon had spoken to him, how did, how did she be answered? The saying is good. Your servant will do as we have said. This was the heart of Shimei. What can you say about this answer? What can you say about the heart of Shimei? He was arrogant. Why was he arrogant? He did not know himself clearly. If he would have known himself clearly, he would have seek for the grace. He would have said to the king, the king, I cannot live according to this word. The king, I cannot keep this condition that you have given me. The king, give me the grace. But instead of seeking the grace, having that arrogant heart, how did he answer? All that the king has said, I will do. All that the king has said, I will do. Meaning what? In the one who relied upon his own self. In the one who relied upon his own heart. In the one who did not know himself clearly. Now there's also many Christians. When we read the word of God, we say, ah, the word of God is good. I can live according to this word. But for the reality, who can live according to the word of God? For the reality, who can keep the Ten Commandments? For the reality, who has ever kept them? But many people without thinking deeply. Many people without knowing who they are before God, what type of heart do they have? All that the Lord has said is good. Had the Lord said, if I keep them, he will bless me when I'm coming in. The Lord said, when I keep them, he will bless me. He will bless every flock that I have. He will bless everything in me. But when you continue, what does the Bible say? If you break even one, you will be cast. So many people, they are living like she may. She may say, all that the Lord has said, we will do. Before God gave the commandment to the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness of Sinai, first God sent Moses and said to Moses, go and call the elders of the children of Israel and read for them this law. During that time, the elders came. The children of Israel also gathered. Moses could read for them the law before this commandment was brought to them. But the time that Moses read the law, how did they answer? In the book of Exodus chapter 24, verses 3. Exodus 24, verses 3. Bible says that, And Moses came and told the, the people all the word of the Lord, and all the judgment, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the word which the Lord has said, we will do. Yes, in this part, they answered with one, with one voice. All that the Lord has said, we will do. You know, in the beginning, God could guide the children of Israel with all the law. And as if, even the time of Adam, to the time that God gave the law, it took 2,500 years. So the time that sin came into the world, in the time that the law came, between the time of the sin and also the time of the law, it was 2,500 years. So, for example, let's look at this place. We realize that 
Sin came through one man, Adam. So through Adam, sin came. But now, this sin which came in 400 BC, it took around 2000, it is the time that the law came. So in between, it took 2,500 years. So the law came 2,500 years later. So the time that these people, it was the time that there was no law in between. There was no law. But law came in 1492 BC, in the time that the law came. So in these 2,500 years that the children of Israel or the Hebrew, and even the time that the children of Israel, they were in the land of Egypt, because the law came 430 years later after the children of Israel have gone to the land of Egypt. During this time, God was guiding the children of Israel. And when God was guiding the children of Israel, God was guiding them to live by faith and also to receive the grace of God. But now it came to the time that now, in, when they were in the wilderness of Sinai, the children of Israel say, all that the Lord has said, we will do. With this heart of all that the Lord has said, we will do, this is the heart that made now God even to give them the law. Why? Because they were having the heart of doing something, because they were thinking that there is something that they can do, but God wants to prove to them that they are the, peop they are the people who cannot do anything. They are the people who are weak. They are the people who nothing good can come out of them. The same way also, she may could have the heart, all that the king has said, I will do. But now the Bible is telling us that after three years, what happened? The servants of Smei ran away. And they ran away to go to the Kish, to go to a place which is called Gath, at someone who is called Kish. So when they ran away during that time, she may without even thinking, she may came out of Jerusalem, she may cross the river Kidron, and she may could go after his servants. When he went after his servants, when he came back, the king called him. And when the king called him, we realized that she may could die. Why she may is dying? She may is dying because she may was thinking like this. He can live according to the word. He was thinking that he can live according to the law. He was already given one law. And that law, it was only one condition. That build your house in Jerusalem and don't go out of the Jerusalem because the day that you will go out of Jerusalem, for sure you shall die. But instead of seeking the grace, instead of looking upon the mercy so that the king can give him grace, so that he can, so that he can say to, to, to the king, I'm the one who is weak, I'm the one who is wicked, I'm the one who cannot do anything. I just need your grace, I just need your mercy. But with a heart that was exalted, during that time, a thought, all that the king has said, it is good, I can do it. Nowadays, many people saw they are trying to live according to the word. They are trying to live according to the law. All that God has said, we will do. Ah, let me keep this. Let me keep this. Ah, let me do like this. And many people, they are trying to live according to the law, but not knowing that, Nobody can live according to the commandment. Nobody can meet the requirement of the commandment. Because what does the law require? The law requires that we keep all of, the, all of them. So the time of birth to the time of death, you should keep all of them. But if you break one, then you have broken all of them. That's what the Bible says. So in the book of uh, James chapter 2, in the book of James chapter 2, James chapter 2, verses 10, the Bible says, For whosoever shall keep the law, the old law, and yet offend in one point, is guilty of all. That this law you might be keeping 9 out of 10. You might be keeping the commandments 9 out of 10. But although you have kept 9 out of 10, but you only offend in one point, you are the one who has broken all of them. You are the, like the one who has never kept even one. So the law does not put us in grades. That so and so had kept 80%, so and so had kept 90%, so and so has kept 100%. No, it doesn't put us on grades. It does not grade us according to the ability, according to how we have tried, according to how many we have kept. No. The law is not merciful. There's no grace in the law. 
So you have to keep all of them from the time of birth to the time of death without breaking one. But if you break one, then the Bible says that you are the one who have already been cast. But now, without Shimei thinking, without the children of Israel thinking deeply, they were just thinking like this, all that God has said, we will do. All that the king has said, I will do. They did not think deeply. And that's how many people they are living without realizing themselves. But if we can realize ourselves, we can see one thing that, ah, we are the people who are weak. We are the people who cannot do. We are the people who does not have anything good in us. The only thing that we need, we need to rely upon Jesus Christ. But instead of people relying upon Jesus Christ, people are always trying to rely upon their own works. So, for example, <coughs> so in this part, for example, instead of relying upon God, people are relying upon their own works. For example, God said that we have to keep them, all of them. You have to keep law without even breaking one. But people think, no, I should keep it. I should keep the Sabbath day. I should keep the commandment without even breaking even one. Not knowing the heart of God. Even she may also did not try to know the heart of the king. If she may would have known the heart of the king during that time, she may would have not relied upon himself. She may would have not tried to live according to himself. But the problem is, he did not know the heart of the king. He did not know. He did not try to learn the heart of the king. Also, there is the heart of God, and also there is the word of God. There is the heart of God, and also there is the law. But what is the most important thing? The most important thing is knowing the heart of God. If we can know the heart of God, clearly, then we can rely upon the heart of God. So the heart of God, God did not give us the law so that we can keep and go to heaven. But why did God give us the law? So that we should fail, so that we should surrender, so that we should realize that nobody can live according to to the requirement of the law. So in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verses 10, the Bible says that, in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verses 10, three ten says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, for it is written, curse is everyone that, is, that, that continued not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. That the first thing is that those people who are under the law, they are under curse. And also the worst thing, if you cannot keep all of them, and how many laws are written in the book of the law, there are 613. So the Bible wants that you should keep all of them from one, from A up to Z, without breaking one. Then if you keep all of them, then you are qualified to go to the kingdom of God. But now the problem is no one has ever kept all of them. Nobody can keep all of them. Why? Because the book of Romans chapter 7 verses 14, the Bible says, We are carnal, soul under sin. So we who are carnal, we who are brought out of the dust of the ground, we who does not have anything good in us, we who are already sold under the sin, then how can we keep this law which is holy? How can we keep the law which is perfect? How can we keep the law which is good? How can we keep the law which is spiritual? But many people without thinking and also without knowing themselves clearly, they are thinking like this, I can live according to it. I'm the one who can keep this law because they don't know the requirement of the law clearly. But if you can know who you are, that you are, uh, that you are carnal, sold under sin, then you will surrender. You will say, God, ha, ah, I need another way. And what is this way? God, have, give me your grace. Have mercy upon me. I'm the one who cannot keep this law. I'm the one who cannot keep, keep the law. I'm the one who cannot live according to the requirement of the law. For there's none who has ever kept the law. For there's none who has ever lived according to the requirement of the law. 
But people without knowing the heart of God, they think that they can keep the law. Not knowing why God gave us the law. So God did not give us the law to keep to go to heaven. But God gave us the law so that our mouth can be shut and all the world might be guilty before God. So in the book of Romans chapter 3 verses 19, Romans 3, 19, the Bible says, verses 19 says, Now we know that what things ever the law says, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. That the law, we were given the law so that every mouth may be stopped. For example, the law says you should not kill. At the same time, the Bible says in the book of Matthew that if you say to your brother, you fool, you are already a murderer. The Bible says, the law says that you should not commit adultery. But in the book of Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says that if you look at a woman and you have the lustful heart toward her, you have already committed adultery. Then when we stand before the law, who can speak? He gave us the law so that every mouth may, may be stopped and all the world may be guilty before God. He gave us the law so that sin can be more sinful, so that the sin can be bigger, so that we can realize how sinful we are, so that we can have the heart to repent and to come before God. But instead of people knowing the purpose of the law, knowing why God gave us the law, people think that God gave us the law to keep to go to heaven. People think that God gave us the law so that we can be holy by keeping the law not knowing exactly the purpose why God gave us the law. Everyone, God did not give us the law to, keep to, go, to, to go to heaven. God did not give us the law so that by the law we can be righteous. If the law would have been able to take us to heaven, Jesus would have not said that is the way. Why Jesus Christ is saying that is the way? Because there's no any other way that can make us to go to heaven. Because there's no any other thing that can give us the life except Jesus Christ. And if the law would have been able, Jesus Christ would have not come. But why did he come? He did not come in vain. He came because the law could not take us to heaven. Because the law cannot make us holy and righteous. So in the book of Romans chapter 3 verses 20, the Bible says that, uh, Therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That by the deeds of the law, no flesh can be justified. Nobody can be holy by keeping the law. Then why did he give us the law? So that we can know what sin is. So that the sin can be more bigger. So that we can be more sinful. So that we could fall. And by falling, we can repent. We can turn to God. We can surrender to God. We can surrender to Jesus Christ by realizing that I can't do it. And the one who is weak, although we say that all that the Lord has said we can do, we are the people who have already felt we cannot do it. Nothing good can come out of us. God wants us to surrender. God wants us to give up. So by giving up, then we can receive the righteousness of God. By giving up, then we can receive the righteousness by faith. Because the righteousness which came by the law has already failed. The righteousness that came through the law cannot make us holy and righteous. So that God had already seen that it cannot work out. So God is giving us a new righteous. So in verses 21, the Bible says like this, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So in this part, the Bible says, But now, but now the righteousness, but now the righteousness, which righteousness is the Bible talk about? That, but now the righteousness of God without the law in, is manifested. Meaning that the righteousness that which was of the law has already failed. The righteousness which was by the law cannot make us holy and righteous. And now because it has already failed, now God is giving us a new righteousness. So there's a righteousness without the law. And this righteousness which is without the law, in verses 22, the Bible says like this, that even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ Jesus, of Jesus Christ. That now we have a new righteousness, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. So there is a new righteousness, because the righteousness of the law had already failed. Because the law 
that came through Mount Sinai, the law that we received from Mount Sinai, it has already failed. It could not make us holy and righteous. So God is giving us a new way. God is giving us a new way to make us righteous. That's why the Bible now says, but now the righteousness of God. But now the righteousness of God without the law. And this righteousness of God without the law, it is now through Jesus Christ. So through Jesus Christ, we receive a new righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, we receive a new holiness. Through Jesus Christ can now make us holy without our own works. Through Jesus Christ can now make the people have already failed. The people have realized that they don't have anything good in them. And God can now make them holy. Although in Romans chapter 3, verses 23, the Bible says, All have sinned and fallen short of glory of God. Yes, in Romans chapter 3, verses 23, the Bible says that all have sinned. Yet through one man, Adam, all of us we have sinned. Through the law, all of us we have failed. Nobody is righteous by the law. All of us we have sinned. All of us we have fallen short of glory of God by the law. But there is a new righteous. But now, the righteousness of God without the law. And what is this righteousness of God without the law? Verses 24 say like this. Verse 24 say, Being justified freely by, the gra by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So in this verse 24, the Bible says, Being justified freely. So we have the free justification. How do we receive this free justification? The one who received this free justification is the one who has realized have already sinned, have already fallen short of glory of God. By my own deeds, I cannot do it. By my own works, I cannot do it. By my own works, I've already failed. Everyone, there are three things that will take people to hellfire. What are these three things? One, sin in the heart. Two, human righteousness. Three, keeping the law. These three, these three things will take people to hellfire. But once you have failed that these three things, you are the one who has seen 100%. You are the one who does not have anything good in him. You are the one who does not have any good that can come out of you. The time that you have realized that, you cannot live according to the law. During that time, you will surrender. During that time, you will give up. During that time, you will surrender to each verse, to verses 24. And when you come to verses 24, the Bible says that being justified. Being justified, everyone. We are the people who are justified. We are the people who are justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So there is the redemption in Jesus Christ. There is the redemption in the blood of Jesus. So through the blood of Jesus, through the work of Jesus, we are the people who are being justified. Not of our works, not of our deeds, but the 100% the work of Jesus Christ. So everyone, I'm really happy for this time. I'm really happy to share with you this word. For sure, have justified. For sure, we are justified freely through the redemption that is Jesus Christ. And everyone, I believe that all of you who have failed will believe in the work of Jesus Christ so that you can see his work. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify your name. Thank you for this time that you have given unto us. Thank you, Lord, because you are always with us. Bless us in each and everything. Guide us continually as we glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen.